Hey there, this is Valentine and welcome to another Postman tutorial. This time we're going to take a look at how you can connect to a database from Postman. And let's start with this very, very simple example that I have here. Now I have this endpoint and what I'm doing here is I'm sending a post request to this orders endpoint. So to put it very simple, I'm trying to submit an order. And as you can see, I'm posting this body with this product ID here. Now, every time I send this request, I will get back the order ID. In this case, the order ID is 10. The problem that I have in this case is that it makes it very hard for me to test if what I have sent was actually received the way I have intended it. Or to put it more technically, if this product ID actually ended up in a database. You'll be able to see that the only test I have so far is the status code is 200. And of course, I can write additional tests to check for this ID property here, if it's an integer or something like that. But again, this doesn't really help me really get this feedback from the database. Now, if this API offers me the possibility of getting this resource, the order with ID number 10, then this can be easily done in Postman because I can simply do a GET request and then I can check the contents of the order. But if this isn't available or for whatever reasons I need to check more advanced things in the database, it may make sense for you to want to connect to a database from Postman. Now let's try to understand a bit what's the problem. Now you would probably imagine that you can simply go here in the tests and write some JavaScript code that connects to a database and this doesn't work. So let's try to understand a bit what is happening and why this won't work. Usually how Postman works is that it uses HTTP to connect to different APIs and to send and retrieve data. Now in our scenario, we want to use the same API that we have used before, but at the same time we want Postman to go sort of like behind the scenes in the database and to read some values so that we can write some tests and make some assertions. Now, as I have mentioned, this is not possible. Postman cannot connect directly to the database. And the reason for that is that Postman can only make HTTP connections. So usually databases, the way they work, they have like their own protocol. And most of the time they don't support HTTP. Now, some databases out there, they may have an HTTP component and exposing an API, and that can be for you a very easy way to get that information from the database. But generally speaking about databases, you don't have this possibility. Now, there are a couple of things that you can do in order to still get this information from the database or to still find a workaround. Now, the first solution, uh, is to really think about this. Do you really need to connect to database? Isn't there any other way that you can write your test? Or is this the really the most critical tests in your entire test infrastructure and you cannot really live without it? Because if you go this path, if you go in the direction of connecting the database, this will make the entire scenario much more complicated and the entire architecture around this test much more complex than you maybe want them to have. So if possible, try not to do it because it is really hard and it will cause you a lot of problems or may cause you a lot of problems. Now, if you really, really want to do it, there are still some easy ways to look into that. As I previously said, the API maybe has a get endpoint and you can sort of a check by calling other endpoints to see if the data that you have sent is correct. Or maybe for a testing environment, the development team can create a test endpoint where you can check this information with the API and that test endpoint maybe isn't publicly available for normal users to use. And this would be like an interesting idea to make it only available in your testing environment so that you can still get this information from the database and still see if everything was properly saved. If this isn't a solution for you, the only way to get around this is to use a third party component, a middleware that you put in between. And what that middleware does is it provides Postman the HTTP protocol that it needs. So Postman will talk with the middleware using HTTP and then the middleware can implement whatever database protocol is needed in order to talk with the database. 
And to put it very simple, if your scenario is not really that complex, this middleware can be like a very simple script that starts a server, that starts an HTTP server, and that talks to the database, and that can be it, and that can run, and the server can run somewhere in the background or whenever you're calling your tests. But if you are not really in the position of building your own solutions, or maybe if your architecture is a bit more complex, then you may need to look into a third party solution that it's already built for talking with databases. And such an example is what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. Now we're going to use this third party middleware in order to demonstrate how you can connect from Postman to your database and still make these assertions that you want to make. The tool that I wanted to show you today is Dream Factory. And you can easily get started online without having to download anything. They have an open source component of the product which you can download and run on your own servers. But in this case, I just wanted to show you how this looks and feel like. So for that reason, I invite you to go to dreamfactory.com and to sign up for a free trial. Once you have registered, and this is pretty simple and you do not need to provide a credit card information or anything like that, you will get an email with details regarding an instance that has been created for you. Now, once you log into that instance, which contains the name that you have selected for your subdomain, you'll be given this interface. So what we're trying to do here is to configure Dream Factory to connect to your database. So in order to do that, the first thing that we should look into is creating a service. Now the service is basically the connection to your database. So I'm going to click here on services and from the left panel, I can create a completely new service. There are different database types and different ways to connect to not only databases, but a lot of other external things that you want to expose as REST. But for this tutorial, we're gonna simply stick to databases. Now I already have a database that is running somewhere in the cloud, and this is a Postgres SQL database. So I'm gonna select that, but feel free to select whatever fits your own particular needs. Let's give this a name, a label, and a description so that you can easily identify it. Then I'm gonna head to config. And the first thing you need to understand regarding the architecture is that Dream Factory is an external service connecting to your own database. As I have previously said, you can install Dream Factory on your own infrastructure so that you don't have external collections. But if you decide to go with this cloud version of Dream Factory that's hosted by Dream Factory, you really need to make sure that they can connect to your own database. And for security reasons, usually databases aren't publicly available. And what you will need to do is probably to whitelist this IP address that's being listed here so that you can allow Dream Factory to connect to your own database. I'm using Heroku for this database and I already have all the credentials that I need on this page. So what I will do is to simply copy paste everything to this configuration page in Dream Factory and then take a look at how everything works. Okay, now I think I have everything that I need. And what I will do is simply click on save. Now, the next step we need to do is to actually see if Dream Factory can connect to our database. So for doing that, we're gonna go to API docs. And this is actually a documentation that's being generated automatically by Dream Factory. And in case you have seen it before, it's um, called Swagger. So it's a Swagger documentation. It's pretty easy to use. And now I have selected from the list the name of the service that I have created, and I have here the possibility of calling different endpoints. Now, it really doesn't matter now in the beginning which of these endpoints I will be calling, so I'm just gonna head to the first one, actually the second one that I have here, underscore func, and I'm gonna click here on try it out, and then click execute, and you will see here that the response from the server is 200, and Actually, the response part is empty, but I just wanted to test that what I have here actually works. So I'm getting the code 200, I'm not getting any errors. Now, what you could be facing is that you're getting some errors, uh, that you that Dream Factory cannot connect to your database, and usually the error 
that occurs will be displayed here. What we need to do is to use the same endpoints here that we have available and see how we can get our data. Now, we know a few things. For example, we are trying to retrieve some data from a table. And to get some data from a table, you can use one of these get endpoints. So either you retrieve more records from the table or you can go to retrieve a particular record from that specific table. In our case, we already have an ID. So it's a good idea to go directly to that data so that we don't get a large data set back that we actually don't need. And again, using the interface, you can click here on try it out. You can add some information if you want to, but you don't really have to fill out these fields here. You are only required to fill out the fields, which, well, say required. So I'm going to say here, I don't know what was the last order ID that I got, but let's say this is, it was seven or something like that. And I know that the table name is called orders. So let's try this endpoint and see if we can actually get our data. And as you can see here, I have the order ID, which is seven, and I have the product ID. So now calling this endpoint that has been exposed by Dream Factory allows me to use this information in Postman in order to get everything to run. Now, calling this endpoint now in Postman won't be so easy. So this is the request URL that I have. And if I simply copy paste this in Postman, it will not work because we are missing some authentication. So in order to get that running as well, we will have to do something else. So I'm going to simply copy this and go in Postman and save it as a request. Okay, so let's go ahead and call it. And you'll see here I'm getting a, an error because I cannot, I'm not allowed to fetch this data yet. Okay, so let's head to the next step and that is to create an app. Now we have the application, but we still need to manage the specific role that grants this application access to the service that we have created. And in order to do that, we have to define a new role. So I'm gonna to go to roles and from the left menu, click on create. Let's call this Postman. So this will be, you have to click here, that's enabled. And then if you go to access, this is really the part that you need to pay attention to. So we're gonna add a new service and this is the name of the service that we have used. It's called Postman. And then you can select even components that you want to grant access to. So for example, these components are actually the endpoints that are available. You can leave it to everything or you can restrict to a specific table or all the tables or and so on. Now I don't need this specific configuration because I'm not so concerned about security, but if you want to limit what kind of data is accessible through this endpoint, you may want to make it as narrow as possible here. Additionally, you can even select what kind of access you are granting. So for example, maybe you do not want to let Postman do stuff like post data or delete data for whatever reason. So it is a good idea if you just want to read stuff from Postman, which normally this is what you would do, is to simply limit this to get. Okay, so we should be fine. So I'm gonna save this. And I'm gonna go back to the app that we have created. And now we have to assign for the app this specific role. So I'm gonna assign the Postman role that we have created now. And I also have this API key here. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna save the entire thing. And now let's go back in Postman and see how everything works. As we have previously seen, this isn't actually working right now. Um, I still need to submit some data. And I'm going to use an authorization helper in order to do that. So the authorization helper that we're going to use is simply called API key. And there are two values that we need to input. Now I'm going to paste here the key that I have just received. And name of the key is API underscore key. And this will be added to the query parameters that we have. So not headers, but query parameters, just in case headers was selected. So let's give this request another try. Now, as you can see, this information has been added to the params. So now I'm sending the API key here with this specific value. Now I'm getting this data back. 
Now, there are two ways on how you can handle this. You can simply create a new request to your collection that simply does the test separately. So I can, for example, in this submit order, I can simply save what is the resource ID. In this case, it was 10. I can save it to a global variable or to an environment variable. And in the next request, I can try to fetch this specific resource by using the variable here. And that's there all is to it. And I can simply go ahead and create a test that I need. So let's go ahead and see how that could work. So what I will do next is to parse the response. And I will use a global variable to hold this information. And as you can see in this response, we have to access the resource property, which is actually an array. And we are gonna grab the first key in an array, which is again an object, and I'm gonna set this to ID. So let's run this and see how it works. Perfect. And now we have order ID saved to 11. So what we need to do here, use the same variable, order ID so that we can fetch this resource and then we can simply go ahead and write some tests so for example I'm gonna check check the product ID and we're expecting that product ID to equal another value that we haven't set yet so I'm gonna read a global variable that I still need to create pm.globals get oops so this will be product id go back for a second and actually define this an integer let's say it's seven seven three three and we can use this product ID inside a body and we'll still send this information now the product ID has been sent to this specific value and then we can go with our endpoint and test it here and again we'll have the same value Always make sure that your tests actually fail. So in case you add something else, you should see a failed test. That is not the case. Now, this is how you can do it in two separate requests. You're submitting an order and you're getting this data. Now, for whatever reason, if you don't want to have to request or that's too complicated for you or too simple, I don't know. There's also the possibility of doing it a bit different. And right here, I'm gonna use a snippet. It's called send a request. That's pretty easy to use. And there are a couple of things that we will do here. We have this address here that is being generated with this API key. So definitely we need to grab this information from here. Now what I can do is to put the API key in a variable as well. That would be a good idea. so that I don't have such delicate information laying all over in my collections. Okay, so that has been set here. And what we need to do here is to build our URL. Now the URL looks like this currently. And we still have here some missing information. So for example, order ID is something that we cannot read in this way. We'll still have to use pm.globals.get order ID. And we still need to add another query parameter that's called API underscore key equals. 
And here we are again getting another value, the API key. Okay, so this is the URL that we are using. Of course, you can put the address or everything, uh, whatever you are interested in there. I'm gonna simply replace this address here. So this will be our URL, hopefully everything works. And let's simply generate a quick test here. So the test has to be inside the callback for the send request because otherwise it will execute too early. So I'm gonna check here, check product ID. And we actually don't have to, we are gonna just get the JSON data from the response. So this is the response variable. We're gonna parse it as JSON. Then we make our expectation pretty, pretty similar to what we had here. So we're gonna spec expect that. Actually, we can simply copy and paste this. It's the same thing. Okay, so we're sending this request to the specific URL and fetching this data. And then we're checking the product ID and seeing if everything works fine. So let's give it another try, see if everything works. Okay, something has failed here. We still have something like unexpected, expected, undefined to deeply equal. So it seems that the response here wasn't proper. Let's open the console and debug a bit to see how we can solve this issue. I'm gonna submit this again. So as you can see, the first request went and this is the second request that we have from our own API. And we can take a look at response body and actually we see here that an error has occurred. So there's a problem with authentication. Maybe I have missed something here. So let's take a quick look. Actually, we need here question mark, not an end, because this wasn't a query parameter before. So let's see if this renders a different result. Okay, now everything works. So the reason for that was this bad end that we have inputted there. It should have been a question mark. No problem, development without errors doesn't exist and it's always good to find a quick way to debug your request and usually Postman console is a good way to simply lock some information, look at the request and understand what's not going right. So this is how we are now checking everything. Again, we have this request, we're using the request body here uh, in order to set a product ID to send this specific order. And then in the tests, we are connecting, we are talking with the database and hey, give me this information. And then we're checking to make sure that everything works the way it should work. And just a precaution, always make sure that your tests fail. Don't just assume that because if the code looks right, everything is fine. Sometimes you may be testing stuff that you don't think you're testing. So yeah, in this case, my test is failing. So it seems that everything is working fine. Of course, this can be still improved from the code point of view, but I just wanted to show you how you can use it. Now I have showed you this example using dreamfactory.com, but I've used this application just as an example. It doesn't mean that you have to use it. You can use any other similar service that provides you this access to your database. If you want to do it, as I mentioned, there's this like cloud solution, uh, which offers you a free trial, but after that you will have to sign up for a package. Otherwise you can simply download the open source version of Dream Factory and run it on your own servers. And yeah, this will be a way a cost, maybe a cost effective way to run it. But of course, you'll have to know what you're doing and take care of hosting it and improving everything. Otherwise, uh, you can simply build your own solution, whatever it need in order to expose your database as a rest endpoint. And using a similar fashion, this is how you can connect from Postman to your database. 
Now, I know this is an advanced tutorial and this is not the easiest thing to do. And databases generally are really, really complex things. Sometimes you will have data spread in multiple tables and you will run into different problems. So yeah, as I previously said, if you can avoid it, try to avoid it because you're really getting your hands dirty with this stuff. But if this is really a requirement for you, this is how I would do it. And my advice is to evaluate different possible solutions out there to see which one works for you best. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If this was the case, give this a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel for more tutorials like this. And if you have any questions or any feedback regarding this, maybe something didn't work, just leave a comment in the section below. I would love to hear back from you. Tell me how this worked out for you. What exactly are you trying to do? I'm more than sure that you are working on more complex examples than what I have showed you, but hopefully this helps you get an understanding on what are the steps necessarily in order to get something like this to work. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.